So this week I get into another video. Today I continue building on the Premiere Pro Basic series that I started a while ago. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Today I want to give a special thanks and shout out to all my subscribers. I hope you're enjoying the content. If there's anything related to filmmaking or photography that you have a question on, feel free to drop me a comment. I love hearing from you guys. Again, welcome and thank you. Today's video focuses solely on the Premiere Pro timeline. The previous videos are linked down below. Uh, by the end of this video, you will have a very strong handle on what's possible in the Premiere Pro timeline. So without making you wait any longer, let's jump right in. Okay, so the timeline panel can be found in any nonlinear editing software out there. It allows you, the editor, to lay out numerous clips to create a final movie made up of those smaller clips. The timeline allows you to sequence your clips and give those otherwise disjointed small clips some structure, like a beginning, a middle, and an end. These clips play from left to right, and the process of building your movies is as simple as dragging items like video and audio from either the project panel or the source monitor to be placing the timeline in your desired order. When you open up Premiere, you're going to be met by several windows. And that first window you're gonna be met with will be this window. It's going to ask you, uh, the, wh what do you want to name your project? I'm going to name my project Episode 15 Timeline, and I'm going to put it where I want it to go. Users, Edit Station, Documents, J Masters, Project. I'm going to hit OK, right? I'm not going to do it now because I already did it. Here's my project. The second window that you're going to be met with is it's going to ask you to create the sequence. Now, if you don't know what kind of footage you're working with or what kind of camera you were working with, you may choose something uh, weird or something that you don't know. It does not matter because Premiere is going to auto-correct you. So I'm gonna call this sequence test. And I'm going to pick something random, the RE2K at 30 frames per second. I'm gonna hit OK. Now, here's the cool part. When you drag your footage, it's going to say and let you know that the clip does not match the settings of your timeline or sequence, and you're gonna to wanna to change it. And that's the part that helps you auto-correct your mistake so that you start out with the right footage in the right timeline. And that's how you create a timeline in Premiere. Okay, so let me give you a little bit of a lay of the land here. So this here, this needle looking thing is the playhead, okay? <clears throat> That's also known as the time code indicator. So as I move the playhead or time code indicator, you will notice that the time code here moves. So this time code represents frames, seconds, minutes. The other thing that you can do to um, designate certain parts in the timeline is use markers. I have a marker here on the timeline. You can have markers on footage or you can have markers on the timeline. So a marker on the timeline, you would have to make sure you don't have anything selected and hit M and you would get a marker to designate something that you're gonna come back to or something that needs your attention. Now, if you hit M again on that marker, you'll get the marker dialog window. You can name it, you can add comments, you can change the color and it's really cool in that regard. And all of these things you can actually uh, customize and change the order in which they show up by right clicking on this empty area, right clicking, and you can actually go down to customize so that I can change the order. I can reset the layout um, and you can do the same thing for the audio. And you can add, you know, if you want to see the track volume, if you want to see the uh, the right and left balance, 
You can add a microphone if you were going to do a voiceover recording. You can take out the mute. You can leave it there. You can solo a track. You can do all kinds of things depending on what it is that, how you want to work. But wait, there's more. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is labels on the timeline. So for example, on video one, you can see that I have my tracks labeled. Um, and the way that works is you can do it here down on the timeline and you can right click, go to labels and change the colors for that particular clip. So if you want to make your track smaller or bigger, you can uh, go over to the track header on an empty area here on the gray, hold down alt on a Mac, uh, that's option on a PC. And if you have a scroll wheel mouse, just scroll up and you'll be able to make your uh, timeline your video larger. Same thing with the audio. So I'll go to the empty area here on the header and I can make that bigger. I'm going to hit the tilde key so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Now, a really cool thing is that instead of doing it uh, individually, uh, see, I'm doing only audio one. If I wanted to do all of them, I'll hold down shift and scroll and you'll notice that the entire audio tracks, all the audio tracks are being larger. And a lot of people don't know this, but you can set presets for the way your timeline looks. So for example, if my picture is locked and I'm not editing the picture, but I'm going into sound design, I could actually have a customized layout and I can call this audio focus. If I go ahead and minimize this like that, I can simply just go up here and go to audio focus and it'll jump to that setting. So you can have any kind of configuration and save that preset and it'll really be great for your workflow. Hey guys, so I'll interject here right now. Um, if you find the information that you're learning to be useful, make sure you hit that like button, uh, subscribe if you haven't already for more information. Now let's get back to the video. Real quick, if you want to zoom in on something, you can hit the plus. You can hit the plus key. First, you have to have the timeline selected. Hit the plus key and you'll be able to zoom in right where the playhead is. If you want to zoom out, hit the minus key and you'll be able to zoom out. Okay. Now, if you're zoomed in and you want to see the timeline very quickly, backslash, not the backspace, and you'll be able to see the entire timeline. Now, the other thing you can do in navigation is that I'm going to zoom in here and I can go frame by frame by hitting the left and arrow keys. So with the timeline selected, I can go frame by frame. As you can see, I'm going to zoom out a bit. But if I wanted to go a little faster and I wanted to go cut by cut, I can hit the up arrow. So as you can see, it's going by every single cut to the left. Oh, sorry, to the right or to the left. If you have a middle mouse button with a scroll wheel, you are able to use modifier keys with the scroll wheel. So if I hold down Alt or Option on a PC, I'm able to scroll and zoom in and zoom out. But notice it zooms in where the mouse is. So it's mouse centered, whereas the other one is playhead centered. So if I have my playhead over the effects badge, it's going to zoom in in that area. If I wanted to scroll, I would hold down control and I'm able to scroll up and down on the timeline. And that's navigation. But something that a lot of people don't use this enough is called pancaking, also known as stacking. So I have here, I have my assembly, my rough cut, and then I have a bunch of clips where I've merged the uh, good audio with. I could actually do this pancaking by just simply grabbing this, this timeline and pulling it out and putting it right above like this. And now essentially I have two timelines that I can simultaneously work off of. Now, up on top, I've got my selects, and down at the bottom, I have my assembly, essentially. So I can select this, and I can bring I can bring this down here. And the cool thing you'll notice is that in the program window, it as soon as I change the timeline, 
the program window adjusts so it knows that I'm in this sequence versus this sequence. So stacking or pancaking is a very effective way to work. It's very fast. You don't have to keep switching back and forth. So I hope you guys enjoy that last tip. And to last tip that I want to give you guys is about nesting. Now, nesting is a way to clean up your timeline and make it very organized and easy to manage. So, for example, here is my last episode where I talked about the tools panel. This timeline, it has a lot of components, a lot of clips. So nesting would help me with cleaning up this timeline. So I'm going to zoom in and here is the cut tool. So I'm going to select everything that had to do with the cut tool and I'm going to nest it, right click and nest. I'm going to call this cut and there it is. Now, if I wanted to edit all the contents inside of there, I could double click and it opened up a timeline that has everything in there. So you go from something like this to something like that. All right, that concludes this video. I hope you uh, enjoyed that and you learned a lot. If you missed the last video on mastering the tools panel within Premiere Pro, make sure you check that out up above. All the videos in the series are linked down below, so be sure to check those out. As always, guys, tell a friend to tell a friend. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell for notifications. It helps the algorithm and the videos. Comment and like. And as always, guys, keep shooting, y'all.